If you're looking to purchase that classic car that you've always wanted, then you can rely on over 30 years experience with Melbourne's classic car specialists. Brooklyn's Classic Cars. The future of Australian race car engineering was on show at Melbourne's Victoria University Werribee campus for the annual Formula SAE Australasian titles. The unique event pits young engineers from universities across Australia, New Zealand and overseas in competition to design and run their own autocross race car. Once again the event attracted a stellar field of local and international competitors including a team from the University of Missouri in the USA. The Missouri team were competing in Australia basically as a result of a bet. Well, uh, since 2004 we've had cars that haven't been very good quality, we haven't finished endurance and we've been just a pretty pitiful team and, uh, and this year we had a pretty good car we felt like that was going to be very successful so we made a, a bet with the school that if we did top 10 in California, our, our USA event, then uh, they would finance our way to Australia and since they from previous years, they didn't think we could do it. They made the bet, and uh, now it's cost them about forty thousand dollars to get us here. But forty thousand dollars well spent, no doubt. You get, the main thing is you're having forty thousand dollars worth of fun. Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, everybody's ex been extremely nice. Uh, University of Swinburne and uh, a lot of the other Adelaide, they've been extremely uh, good to us. Swinburne let us use their facilities to ship the car there and uh, use their dyno. So I can't say thanks to them enough. In incredible group of guys. Tell us a bit about the car. What are the in terms of your uh, presentation and what you are, you, what are your sort of selling features from a technical point of view? Uh, technical, we have a reliable powertrain that has never given us any trouble. The car has never overheated on us. We can run lap after lap after lap uh, without having to adjust anything. You know, we built a lot of adjustment into the car, so um, we had the car running in April. The competition in California was June so we had a lot of time to test and tune we got it perfected then and then since then we've just used the same setup and just run track after track after track so this is our fifth endurance that we actually finished uh, except for the one before that we uh, ran out of fuel on but I've been a very very reliable car for us so what is the power plant it's a 2008 600 double R Honda uh, super bike engine so what modifications have you made to that internals are completely stock I, I reduced the sump by about a quart which is almost a liter here I think and uh, engineered an intake and exhaust to just give us clean reliable power and a, a large area under the curve um, so it, it makes it a very drivable car it's not very peaky it just pulls throughout the entire range. The interesting thing is that uh, over the years there's been controversy over here about the uh, the worthwhile of aerodynamics. Monash have been persisting with it for many years and it's only in the last year or so that it's really started to pay off. Obviously you're running the wings as well. You obviously think there's a benefit there. It's like anything in engineering. If you, in if you set out with a goal and you engineer a component to that goal, anything's possible. You can make wings work at, you know, 25 miles an hour. So uh, I don't know what that is in kilo kilometers an hour. But uh, so our wings are more sort of suited towards a, an open track like they run in the States. I definitely did feel it uh, on the, the back uh, sweepers and some of the, the tighter stuff even. You definitely could carry more speed through it. Um, it's like anything. If you engineer it with a goal in mind and you meet that goal, then that's then it's worthwhile. So having competed in the United States on a number of occasions, this is your first time out to Australia, what do you think of the standard of competition from the local universities? I think it's very, very good. Uh, it's just like in the States, you have a group of people that are you know, going to be top 15 or so, and they're going to be very, very stiff, and then you got a, the group underneath that that they're going to be very stiff there. So it's uh, as far as from that standpoint, I don't really see any difference. There's less teams here, but I mean, you know, the, the Monashes and the Swinburns of the world, I mean, they... They're extremely stiff, they're extremely stiff competition. This year's event also featured electric powered cars in open competition for the first time. RMIT's car won the class and finished 17th overall. Their task was made easier when the only other electric car in the field from Swinburne University couldn't complete the driving events thanks to the failure of one of the few parts of the car that the team didn't build themselves, the engine. Uh, we had a bit of complications with the motor. We think we've got a faulty one, so we're going to have to send that back for warranty. 
This is AC induction motor, it pulls about 60 kilowatts. Uh, it's got a DC bus voltage of about 340 volts. Uh, pulls about 200 amps. Um, it's a chromoly space frame, uh, double wishbone suspension. It pulls about a G's worth of acceleration, two G's worth of deceleration, and two G's worth of cornering. So what's the batteries? What's the power that you're using? Uh, they're Dow Cocums, um, 31 amp hours, so we've got about 10 kilowatt hours worth of uh, bat battery power. So what's the configuration? Are they a lithium ion or lithium polymer? Lithium polymer. At the moment, a lot of people will say, well, it's a great idea and, uh, and it's all very clever, but how practical is this and how long is it going to be before we see the technology used in cars like this available to us, not just on the road, but also on the racetrack? Um, I, st I still think it's a few few years away um, before it's like viable commercially. Uh, and there's a lot of safety issues. You really do begin to respect the electricity a lot more after working with such high voltages. We've already had a few explosions, so it's all, um, yeah... You've probably just got a whole bunch of our viewers suddenly interested in the world of electric cars now that they know that there's explosions. I mean, my ears are pricked up. Yeah, uh, there's some big explosions. We actually blew up three inverters, so, um, yeah, it's, it's quite exciting. Electric cars were very much the theme of this year's Formula SAE. Although not competing, there was plenty of attention given to this all-electric sprint cart from Melbourne's Chisholm Institute. We run a um, bed in schools program. That's where the VCE students come down. And they do a two-year project where they build the cart, they raise all the money themselves, and what you see behind me is the fruit of their, their labour. So tell us a bit about the cart. I mean, it looks like, I take it it's your fairly standard uh, cart chassis. Uh, is that a proprietary chassis or one you built yourself? No, no, that's a, um, a standard cart chassis that we got from um, a karting joint and we've converted it. So. Okay, so when you say uh, convert, the obvious things that we see are the uh, the batteries and the electric motor sitting where the uh, normal petrol engine would be. First of all, tell us about the uh, tell us about the batteries. Well, the batteries come from um, my company. We supply them, Power Delivery Solutions, and what we do is we um, assemble the packs together with the students, and they 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 can be bolted together so the students learn about um, safety and current. And we well we put get to put the packs together and assemble them to the right voltage and right current rating to get the power out. And then they are lithium ion phosphate batteries, so they're a lot lighter than lead acid. And so the students get to deal with state of the art technology right off the bat. So what sort of engine is that power being put into? The engine at the moment is a permanent magnet DC motor. We are going to change that to a very high powered um, 40 horsepower motor next year. And we look to rival and hopefully they'll let us race it here next year at the SAE and um, hopefully put some people to shame, which would be good. Melbourne's Monash University team won the main event by over 100 points from Swinburne's petrol-powered car with the always happy team from Sophia University, Japan, in third place. The Monash car is the latest evolution of a concept going back several years and features distinctive aerodynamics that certainly seem to pay off in the driving events. The car excelled on the skid pan with a score of 50 points as well as easily winning the autocross and endurance sections. New rules for 2011 will see a lot of teams going back to the drawing boards looking for new ideas and designs. But after all, that's what this competition is all about. Do they still have drawing boards? Born on the racetrack and with 29 Australian championships and major international racing success, the name Elfin is synonymous with high performance. From the thundering MR8 to the late and affordable T5, now you can own your own piece of Elfin magic. Australia sports car, Elfin. Looking for a home base for all the action at the track or a great holiday with the family? Your answer is the all-seasons Phillip Island Eco Resort. Check out the well-appointed studio spa units and two and three bedroom villas. Conveniently located in the centre of Phillip Island, only three kilometres from the famous Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit, the Eco Resort is a great place for team launches, conferences, weddings and corporate retreats. The All Seasons Phillip Island Eco Resort. Proud supporters of local motorsport and in pit lane.